Hello, I'm Tabitha Muthoni and welcome to On the Farms of Africa. This is a show that brings you various tech farming methods, trending and emerging agribusinesses in Africa. This week, we take you to Green Village in Kinale, Kiambu County, where we tell you how to grow capsicums, lettuce, tomatoes and cucumber and a greenhouse farming. Later, Tim Juguna, the founder of Affordable Greenhouse Limited at Green Village, gives us an in-depth insight on greenhouse practice. A greenhouse is a building in which you grow plants that need to be protected from bad weather. Also referred to as a glass house, it is a structure with walls and roof made mainly of transparent material, such as glass or paper, in which plants requiring regulated climatic conditions are grown. Here at Green Village, we meet Daniel Karaoke, the farm manager, who takes us through each greenhouse, explaining the growth process of each crop. Saba, Saba na nyanya. I nyanya, uwa unaweza ipanda direct, ikuwa seed, ama uipanda ikuwa seedlings. But first things first. First, nasema ujege greenhouse. Uh, in a tiny mare, on a little doorway, I eat by 15, 8 meters, width, length, 15 meters. Now, to go on, it depends on the type of land. Whether you are tiny mare or shabayako. That's my opinion. That is only because we can find a nice washing paper. I can screen it at the top of the mountain. Labda, ukipata kwa hile shimo pali umepanda Kumetoa with skidogo hivi, hiyo ni kumuwa tu na mikono Kwa si dripline, umeifunikia chini, maji na flow na dripline, anafu umefunikia Then hile motion paper, ina control, moisture, kukondani, na evaporation Ukipata seed, lazima itakuwa na duration kubwa kiasi, juu hiko chini, na kuja water kutoka chini. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah. Asa nayo seedling mm -hmm. unaileta ikiwa mmea wenye umemea tayari. From nursery ukileta direct mm -hmm. unakuja unapanda kwa hivyo inaendelea. Nyanya zina grow kwa temperature na gani? Yes you can control but usually what temperature range? Nyanya inaweza ku grow kwa temperature yote. Mm -hmm. Provide kama hapa kenali. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Temperature yake inaenda hata kwenda chini na kuanga mpaka 11 ama 9. Mm -hmm. yeah? That's why greenhouse yetu tukijenga lazima tuweke curtain ya kufunga. Mm -hmm. Yaani baridi ikiingia tunaifunga inse. Mm -hmm. Lakini joto ikiingia ndani tunafungua zile curtains. Wow. Yeah? Hatuwekagi curtains. Mm -hmm. yeah? Tunaikanga net ya ventilation. With proper growth conditions in place, the seed can then germinate. Hii variety ya nyanya ni mapanda ni gani? Sasa hii hapa tuna Bravo. Tuna Ana, kuna Star. Tuna variety nyingi lakini sasa hii tuna concentrate na Ana, Bravo na Star. Kuna matunda lefu na ile ya Loud na kuna nyingine nyembamba kidogo. Sasa ni type tofauti tofauti. Sasa ukipanda matunda ndio itakwambia hii ni Bravo, hii ni Star ama hii ni Ana. Ana F1 Bravo F1, mm -hmm. kitu kama hiyo. Greenhouse tomatoes grow and produce fruit indefinitely, taking advantage of the long growing season. The long growth process is also called indeterminate, meaning only the farmer can stop its growing by approaching the crop. Tangu siku ya kupanda, tunahuwa tunaipe miezi tatu. Mana miezi tatu, unaza kufuna. Kama tuseme hii, si hii, saa hii tuna dilo na ana hii ni ana. Yeah? Hii huwa tunaipe duration ya wana ya. Yani tagu kupanda, paka ile siku utaona mafuno yake imeisha, tunaipe aga wana ya. Na ikuwa less, ni tuseme ni 10 month. Sasa hapo, ni nyanya hako ukiangalia uone production yake imeenda chini. Unaeza ingoa. Yeah? Ayafu upepe elaadi tena, kupanda ingine ama upanda kitu ingine tofauti. After three months, unaanza kuharvest. Uwe utaendelea kufuna. After miezi tatu, unaendelea kufuna. Continuous. Juhu, ukifuna hii tawi ya chini, yu ingine badu inaza, yu ingine inaza. Tuhusi hile nyanya ya tia miezi tatu, ukimuvuna, 
basi ukiangalia kama hii huwa inaenda juu ikifika juu huwa tunailaza chini pia spring kama zile bolea kuna bolea zinapitaka kwa matawi direct direct kwa matawi kwa hivyo nasema we spray lakini baada ya spray ikiwa juu tunailaza chini hata hii machine paper huwa inasaidia sana nyanya isiguse chini inalia hiyo karatasi kwa hivyo kuoza kwa nyanya ni gumu sana juu nyanya ukiweka kwa mchanga lazima ioze Karaoke is very particular about what industrious fertilizers go into the crop. Kuna those diseases that attack tomatoes. Yeah. So far, yinyi mekumbana na what kind of diseases and how have we been able to deal with them? Tumekumbana na white flies. Asa hiyo, tumesha control. Because kuna hile chemical huwa tunaspray. Inamaiza white fly up. Mm -hmm. In the case, white fly imeingia kwa greenhouse and done. Unaiza tumia chemical. Lakini kwa greenhouse huwa tunatumia yo organic fertilizers. Oh, uh, organic fertilizers. Uh, that's why mm -hmm. greenhouse ni controlled environment. Yeah. With the competitive market for readily available goods, the prices vary depending on the season. Tuko na market kama tao, mm -hmm. yeah, na lombi, yeah, set a market, yeah, set a park, yeah, mm -hmm. ata kwa nini kwa supermarkets nyingi tunauzanga nini alafu unajua tomato inakuwa ya led cause kila mtu kwa siku kwa mili yake si asubuhi si saa saba si jioni lazima atumie tomatoes kwa hivyo tomatoes ni kama led market next enter sweet pepper also known as capsicum yeah you have capsicum kwa kiswahili ni hoho kama hii nimeshika hivi. Tukona aina tofauti mbili, kuna yellow na red. The first thing, lazima upepe ya blood. Friend kwambia kutoka kwa nyanya, uiweke vizuri, ndio ukuja kuweka machine paper uifunikie. Drip line ziko ndani. Sasa then unakuja na siri zako unapanda kwa kila shimo ya drip line. Hapa huwa tunachukua seedlings bado ama tuna propagate. Zote unapanda kabla itoe matunda huwa inaenda yani two month and a half. Inaanza kutoa the first fruit. Kutoka hapo ndio inakuja ina branch. Iki branch hivi inaendelea kutoa matunda. Hizo branches zinaweza kuwa hata tano provided zote usifunge. Cause ikipata weight inaweza fanya breakage. Lazima uifunge na hizi kamba. The indeterminate season of a sweet pepper is shorter than that of a tomato. Tofauti ya hii haiendangi stem moja iko na branches. Na duration yake iko chini kutoka kuliko ya nyanya. Duration yake ni kama 7 month. Yaani kutoka kupanda na na almost 7 month to 10 month. After the month unaanza ku harvest. Kwa hivyo iko na duration ya 4 month or 6 month. It depends how you uta pair ni hoho yako madzi fertilizer yani vile utaituza ndio ita come down level Diseases are a common misfit for most of the crops but the enthusiastic farm manager has been able to terminate them Oh ile challenge tunakuwa nayo nyingi labda afids singie nani ya greenhouse ama leaf miner kuna ile mdudu inaingia kwa nini kwa matawi Naitwa leaf miner but we used to control it. We use chemical like otifa or absoluta or lexus. The markets vary although affordable greenhouse limited is lucky enough to have a reliable market for its produce. Unajua market ni kitu huwezi assess at season hii itakuwa hii itakuwa hii. Kwa hivyo inanipend na soko file ina lan kama soko iko juu una, lazima unajua hii kicha tan lazima ivune sasa ukipeleka kwa market yeah? ile soko utapata ile bei itabidi uuze kwa hiyo bei kwa sababu huwezi subiri ati uiache kwa shamba ati upate ile market ya juu ama uh. lakini sasa kwa sisi tuko na lead market kama kwa nini kwa supermarkets kuna kwa na customer kama city markets yeah? or their frequently tuna wa, huwa tunawapea 
kwa hivyo hao hawanaga nini ati lazima tugoje place sasa ina inibedi place ya soko to a rather interesting plant the cucumber cucumber unajua labda hujaiona ikiwa imepandwa sasa hii ndio cucumber iko kwa plant yenyewe sasa hii plant kwa inaza kutoka chini inakuza kama inaza tunailalo kwa hizi kamba bado ikiendelea kufanya flowering unachuna za chini na bado inaendelea vile vile unachuna hizi bado inafanya flowering bila tu boost na fertilizer kama ile ya fertigation ama ile ya spring kuna ile fertilizer bado ile ya kupita kwa matawi kuna fruit and flower vegetative yote lakini ikiwa ndogo huwa tunaanzia na status hiyo ni ya kuboost kakiwa kanogo ina glow na glow faster ikifika karibu flowering tunaweka vegetative ikifika vegetative nayo inakuza ikifika flowering tunaweka fruit and flower until now bado tunaweka fruit and flower cause inaendelea kuzaa vile unavuna chini bado inaendelea kuzaa Cucumber is a vegetable that belongs to the family of pumpkins. The leaves are hard and coarse and a bit thorny. The fruit's hard skin varies depending on the seed with some having a rather thorny and rough to smooth skin. Tuseme cucumber inakuanga hivyo. Kama ni hiyo ya English ni plain. Lakini hii inakuanga hivyo. Lakini matawi yake, si unajua cucumber ni family moja na kama pumpkins. Tuseme kama nini? Watermelons hii yeah? ni family moja matawi yake inakuwa yana kama iko na mimba mimba kiasi hivi sasa we have two types of different cucumbers for now we have english and this one this local cucumber but we have english one inakuwa left kiasi lakini hii huwa production yake iko tu kuliko ya english english ikifikia muda fulani ina complete ni mambo ya kuza its growth and harvest process is similar to that of tomatoes and capsicums. It takes two and a half to three months. You start harvesting. After that, you proceed until you see your production is slow. You gonna approach it. Charge is ya ke dabla powdery, powdery mid mid down. Iyo diyo wa ina subwa sana cucumber. Lakini ukisha ikontrol ma pe ma ai kusubwa itena. The lettuce take a shorter time to grow and hence are not grown inside the greenhouse. That is ni ile mboga asili ya kupika una ni ile ya kuweka kwa kachubali. Kitu ya kwanza lazima shamba yako kwanza uilime vizuri. Yaani baada ya hapo uweke samadi ama manyua. Eh? Yeah? Ida ngombe ama ya mbuzi. Ukiweka yote alafu yaani uichanganye tena na ile mchanga kutoka hapo ndio unakuja kutengeneza hizi beds kutoka hapo uweke drip zako alafu ukuje upande sasa huwa tunachukua seedling unakuja tunapanda direct seedling alafu kutoka hapo tunaipe fertilizer nini alafu usiona kuna drip line naipe maji pali drip inamwaga maji unapanda mme yako hapo wewe hatuna wastage ya maji. Hiyo drip pale na mwaga maji ukipe almost nusu saa ama 45 minutes, yeah? Chini yake inaendaga almost 6 inches kwenda chini. Kwa hivyo hiyo mmea hata mizizi yake inapata maji vizuri sana. Kwa tuko na mbegu tofauti tofauti lakini tuko na aina mbili. Ukiangalia kama hii na ile inakaa kama cabbage pale ya fertilizer kuna ile kama DAP huwa tunatumia kuna NPK ama CN NPK na CN huwa tunaiweka kwa drip line kwa fertigation tank inakuja direct lakini DAP tunaitumia kupandia ukianza kupanda seedlings lazima uipande nayo Ah, lentis inaga disis nyingi labda tusema kama same kama hii ya kenani kuna baliti kiasi labda ipato na ile red blade ama red blade 
lazima hiyo ucontrol kutoka hapo labda mos kwa inasumbua kutoka chini inakula mizizi lakini hiyo tumecha control kwa sasa hii hatuna problem ya mos after the month tunaanza kuifuna hata usangi local sasa atimu moja moja lakini kuna watu wanakuza wanasema nataka pieces kama 100 pieces kama 500 yeah? it depends na vile mtu anataka pieces zake ama kilo tunaosaka kwa kilo ama kwa pieces After everything has been harvested it is then taken to the grading shed where a selection of various qualities is done Greenhouse means going green and on that nothing goes into waste here the cut off leaves from the plants decompose and are later used as farm manure With greenhouses allowing farmers to grow crops any time of the year higher yields are expected in a bid to ensure a hunger free nation and overall growth in the agri business sector And on our one-on-one -on -one interview we talked to Mr. Tim Jiguna, the founder of Affordable Greenhouse Limited. But first, here's a look at his profile. Tim Jiguna holds a bachelor's degree in business administration from the University of Massachusetts Boston and a master's in science in information systems from the University of Phoenix. Tim is also a certified project manager and holds a certificate in agribusiness management. He has over 15 years of experience working with multinational and local organizations. He is responsible for the day-to-day -day running of the organization, corporate change and business development. So Mr. Tim Jigena, yes. welcome to on the farms of Africa. Thank you Tabitha. Uh, so maybe you can tell us a little bit about your journey. How did it all start? Affordable Greenhouse started uh, I would say by chance. I don't want to say by accident. Um, in 2008, um, I wanted to do a small greenhouse for myself because I was interested in farming but I wanted to do you know uh, a small scale project um, at at my farm this was in Ruiru uh, and so I went looking for information um, so that I could do the right thing and I went to um, you know one organization um, you know a government in, in institution and I thought that I was going to get the proper information that I was looking for unfortunately it it did not go as uh, as I expected Um so I, I was taken you know in circles uh but the one good thing that happened out of that is the guy that was um trying to walk me through that journey uh introduced me to a technician uh who then guided me through the rest of the project and I was able to successfully complete my small greenhouse uh at at, at my plot in Ruiru. Fast forward um a month or two a friend of mine came to visit and uh she saw what we had done and uh, she she was impressed you know she liked you know what the tomatoes were looking like and so on and she said i would like a greenhouse like this and i said well i can connect you to the technician that did this for me uh so that she, you know he can do that for you and she said no you team you're the one i know so um i'm going to entrust my project to you um at the time i was you know i wasn't doing farm, farming full time i was i was actually um you know i was just in a different field i was actually teaching um so i would go to you know school in the morning and in the evening i would go see you know how the project is going um and um it went very well and actually before we finished that project um she introduced me to her neighbor i still remember because the lady called me at about nine o'clock at night and she the question that she asked made all the difference she asked uyu ni ule njuguna na jengaga greenhouse had not you know had not uh, done greenhouse construction before really uh, but um, i saw the opportunity and uh, i hesitated for only three seconds and i said yes ni mimi wow. and from there um, she said you know i've seen what you've done uh, at my neighbors um, can you come and uh, maybe take some measurements and do a similar greenhouse for me so i took my trusty uh, technician uh the following day to the neighbors we took some measurements did a slight mark up uh to cater for my fuel and so on and um we had a, a second you know a third successful project now as fate would have it she referred me to her sister in thika wow. um connections, connections mm -hmm. uh who later referred me to a client in gong uh and then i think it was odiru after that okay. and from there we just uh before i knew it i had a business on my hands It took a little bit of time to gain the traction uh but um it has grown um over the years um we've done 
small projects, big projects, uh, and we've, we've worked with different clients in Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, and all the way out to Nigeria. What are some of the factors to consider in putting up a greenhouse? Farming is fun, and I use that word very, very loosely, um, but it is also not for the faint-hearted. Uh, if it's something that you actually enjoy doing, if you actually enjoy seeing uh, a crop, you know, come up from a seedling into a mature, you know, mature plant and for it to bear fruit, um, then you can definitely do it. I mean, it's an interesting business to be in. Um, just like any other business, he has its up, you know, he has a ups and downs. But for me, it's very gratifying. Uh, and that's why I went into it full time. There are a few basic steps that you must consider. Um, one, of course, the availability of land. Uh, to do greenhouse farming, you don't need a lot of land. You know, an, an eighth of an acre um, is enough for you to get started. So if you have a couple lot, you know, maybe, you know, a, a lot of my clients are urban dwellers who have brought, you know, some plots in, you know, uh, Kamulu, Kajiado and all these other, you know, places, uh, waiting for them to appreciate, right? Um, so if you have something like that, then um, you can definitely get started. The other thing that you need to do is you, you must be sure about your water source. You must, because... In the greenhouse, there's no rain, so you're not depending on the rain. So you, you do need to have a reliable source of water. Um, everything else can be taken care of because the next step is to do a, a soil test, make sure that the soil is suitable. Uh, but in most cases, it's going to be a soil test that tells us this is what we need to add to your soil in order for you to be successful, for you to grow either tomatoes, uh, capsicums, whatever it is that you want to grow. So we do work with um, um, some labs. Um, that actually help us to test the soil and give us um, the nutritional composition um, so that we know um, what kind of soil are we dealing with and what do we need to add to it. Um, you know, what's the pH level, the acidity and so on. Eh? So we need, we need to test that. But that's, that's on our side. That's where now we, we come in uh, as a technical expert. On your soil, mm -hmm. uh, most of the farmers on that side, most of their crops are organic farming have been done the organic um, There's a mixture. There's a mixture of conventional and, and organic farming. Um, we, we, as a country, we're not at a stage where we are, we are able to do 100% organic farming. And anybody that tells you uh, that at this, at this juncture, Kenya can do 100% organic farming, they're lying to you. Um, however, we do try our level best to minimize um, the, the number of chemicals that we're using. I'm very particular on what, what chemicals are going into the crop and what chemicals are going into the soil because I need that soil. Um, but a lot of farmers you'll find, um, you know, they, you know, they don't, they probably do not understand what needs to go into the soil. Uh, so they try a whole bunch of um, hazardous chemicals, really, uh, to try and improve their production. Uh, and you, you know, it's, it's counterproductive. What are some of the challenges that you've faced so far? Oh, the challenges! I can tell you about challenges all day. Wow. <laughs> but generally, what happens? Um, number one, labor. We do have a challenge with getting. Um, qualified labor, okay. not because we do not have um, people who have gone to school and, and, and studied agriculture or agribusiness management, uh, but I think it's just the attitude towards agriculture, okay, um, especially people who, you know, you know, youngsters who are, coming, who are coming out of the university, or I have a degree in agribusiness management, I have a degree in, uh, you know, soil science, I don't want to go and get my hands dirty with the soil. Okay. So you end up um, preferring to use those people who have not actually got in formal education yeah. and, you, and you groom them, um, you mold them into, in, into the people that you want, yeah. okay? okay. Uh, which is rather unfortunate because if, if our institutions um, encouraged a more practical approach, okay, to agriculture and not just theor uh, theory, then we would be so much further ahead. I do interview a lot of people with good papers, but sometimes I, I, I would prefer to hire somebody that does not have a college degree, okay, uh, as opposed to somebody who's coming with me with shiny papers and, you know, zero experience on the ground. Number two, of course, I would, um, I would say the cost of inputs. You know, it's a major challenge. You see farmers complaining all the time about the lack of market. If it's costing you so much to produce a kilo of tomatoes, then you have to recoup that at the market. So you try to, you know, price your, you know, your product a little bit higher. Uh, and at the end of the day, um, if somebody else is bringing their tomatoes from Tanzania, where the cost of production is lower, then the buyer will look at the, the lower cost. 
Um, and so that, that, that has also been a, been a challenge. So I would, I would say, um, and again, this is probably even a challenge to, to, to our government, that we, we really need to look at the cost of production. We need to look at the cost of inputs because that is hurting a lot of farmers. Uh, and that's not just in, in horticulture. Um, I see farmers complaining about the cost of um, eggs, okay, because you have people bringing in cheaper eggs from Uganda uh, and uh, the, the people who are farming in Kenya, because the cost of feeds is that high, they cannot sell a tray of eggs as, at, at 200 or even 250. They have to sell it at 300 shillings in order for them to recoup their investment. Yet, you have eggs which are coming from across the border at 200 shillings a tray. So, so that, that's, that's a challenge uh, and I really, really hope that um, the powers that be are actually um, paying attention to that. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I, th I think for, as far as challenges are concerned, um, so there's that and of course, the, um, you know, I talked about you know, the, the, the management and uh, the, you know, the human resource. Um, so management is also key for people who are looking to go into greenhouse farming or any kind of farming. You know, you cannot do this um, on your phone it's almost impossible, you're almost guaranteed to fail. You know, if, uh, if you do not have direct contact with your farm, um, if you don't have a reliable person on the ground, um, then nine out of 10 times you are going to fail. Talk to us about the contribution of greenhouse farming into the agribusiness market. How has it uh, contributed? In Kenya, um, compared to other East African, East African countries, we have a much larger percentage of our land which is uh, arid or semi-arid. When you compare, you know, when you compare Kenya to, say, Tanzania or Uganda, um, in Tanzania, almost every part of the country, you can plant, you know, and grow, you know, grow your, your, your crops without any, without any worry. Same thing with Uganda. Unfortunately, in Kenya, because we have such a large portion of our country, which is arid and semi-arid, we do have to think about modern technology in order for us to be able to produce. Um, and that's where the... the, the you know greenhouse technology comes in because the greenhouse technology enables you to produce um, you know food in in maybe not not very ideal environment because we create that environment um, you know uh, it's a controlled environment meaning um, you're able to manage the soil there in uh, or even use other um, alternative um, methods you know you don't have to use soil there are other media uh, medium that we we can use um, also you're, you're controlling the amount of water that you're using by using the drip irrigation system. Um, you're also controlling your production. Basically, all your production conditions are controlled. So there's, there's, uh, there, there are great uh, benefits to using a greenhouse as opposed to trying to do this in the outdoors. Mm -hmm. Transitioning from I to yes. farming. <laughs> yes. So how has farming impacted your life? I, I think I have a lot more peace. Wow, <laughs> I have peace. a lot more peace. I, I love that word. Yes. I, I actually do enjoy being at the farm. Um, it, you know, it's a lot more refreshing uh, when I'm there. Uh, you know, away from the hustle and bustle of the city. Um, also, see, for me, you know, seeing that small seedling develop into, you know, a mature fruit-bearing uh, plant, you know, that gives me satisfaction. Um, not that I have nothing against IT. I, I still practice some, you know, some ICT. Um, but, you know, for me, you know, agriculture it gives me a lot more uh, peace of mind. Where do you see Affordable Greenhouse Limited in the near future? What are your growth opportunities? We are actually, right now, even as, uh, as, you know, as we speak, I'm, I'm working with uh, a, a Dutch organization um, who are helping us to raise our portfolio in the sense that we are looking to um, produce to a more international or more global um, standard. Um, because we, we've been exporting, you know, a, a, a few of our, of our vegetables, but we would like to grow that. Uh, number two, we are looking at getting a lot more involved with, um, you know, organizations who are looking to maybe utilize maybe some land that they have. Um, we do work a lot with uh, institutions, um, schools and the like, um, who probably have some spare land and they, they would like to, you know, maybe utilize that land to produce food for their own, you know, for their own kitchens. Okay, uh, because you know, of course, you know, we all know that one of the greatest expenses of schools um, is food. So if they are able to produce their own food, it really um, you know takes care of their budget. Um, so we, we are looking to grow 
the, the organization more in that direction. What advice would you give to upcoming farmers, okay. the youth out there, mm -hmm. and anyone who is interested in the agribusiness sector? What would you advise? Them? Um, I do have a passion for the youth, so you know, so I do talk to the youth quite often, and so this is uh, this is a good platform to do so. Um, one of the things I would say, or many young people, um, have a very idealistic approach, you know, to you know this farming. Uh, and they probably think, okay, this is not something that is, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's not up to my standard. Yeah, it's not suitable because I am, you know, I'm a graduate. I have a master's in this and, and the other. Uh, and so they feel like they are, they are being, you know, they are going below um, where they're supposed to be. But what I would say to the youth is get involved. You don't have to be the one, you know, doing the manual labor, but organize your people properly so that they produce. Um, in a you know in a professional way, uh, and so that you grow. Uh, and it, when you look at farming as a business, okay, don't just look at it as what your grandmother does in the village, you know, planting maize and beans, which is you know what a lot of uh, you know that generation probably does. Um, look at it in terms of um, how can I how can I add value to you know the, the product, okay? How can we make this grow? Uh, so that we we are more professional. One of the other things I would say is even for farmers who are you know currently practicing um, agriculture, um, getting your systems in place, uh, getting more organized. Many farmers cannot tell you how much they have spent in fertilizers, how much they have sent, spent in pesticides, and so on. Um, they just plant uh, and and hope and pray, <laughs> right? Uh, so it's it's a very unfortunate. Um, situation that we find ourselves in because you don't know when you're making money or when you're losing money. All it takes is an exercise book, you know, which costs less than 50 bob. Just write down, you know, what is happening at the farm, uh, write, you know, put down your records. Um, that will give you success. You, at least you'll have a measure, uh, you know, by which you can uh, gauge w whether you're, you know, you're going up or you're going down. Um, I would encourage people to embrace uh, greenhouse farming um, because it is it, it, you know, you look around Nairobi and the surrounding uh, and all the, you know, big farms are being converted into concrete jungles. So all those people need to eat. So if you're producing the food, there's a market. Sometimes it might be down, sometimes it might be up. But as long as you're in there, okay, you'll always, you'll always succeed. Wow. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. All right. Jim. Thank you. Nice having you here. Same here. Thank you. All right. And all the best. Thank you. That's all we had time for today, but tune in again next week where we get to explore more in the agribusiness sector. From me, Tabitha Muthoni, and the entire On the Farms of Africa team, have a lovely week. <laughs> <laughs>